Okay, yeah, so I think I take it from here. This one minute, um, I can maybe speak a little bit about what's in general in to be expected for the session. Nothing crucial yet. So I share my screen with the overall um, with the overall agenda of our session. And I also welcome, um, as I see in the participation list, uh, lots of my students from the class are so welcome. You found the right spot. So this is the data management, analytics and machine learning session. So admittedly, it's a, it's a very large part um, that we cover here today. So um, we have several topics, which is quite interesting. And we had lots of good submissions for the conference. Um, however, we could not accept everyone. Um, we had a very tough competition among papers. And in a way, you see, we managed to have four different papers. You will see that now the agenda has just three. But let me remind you again, um, for those that missed it here and came later to the session, that also the best paper award in the way is also a data management slash analysis um, paper. So also this is what we got accepted, but what got a special um, presentation before our slot here in this uh, particular session now. So just before we start with the recordings of all of these, maybe shortly um, a hint that there is this Slack channel where you can raise questions. Um, you see, basically, this is this one where you can, you know, if you are already registered and got the invitation to the Slack channel, then you're welcome to raise questions here. But also, um, we have a chat in the Zoom um, that you basically can access and then also add your questions here. And all of the papers are represented by, um, even if you have just recordings, all of the papers are represented by some folks that will talk and can also answer these questions. So um, maybe just as a short overview before we really get started, let me go quickly through the three papers that will be now presented in this session here. So the first one is accelerated deep learning inference, this cross layer data reuse on GPUs, which is a quite interesting paper. Um, of course, that's why it's got accepted. It's interesting in more ways than one. Usually deep learning is really interesting these days. You have surely heard that in the media. And also what's quite interesting with this is that it costs you hell a lot of computing, which is usually for high performance computing, not a problem. But if you can encourage something we call data reuse on GPUs, that's definitely still interesting to do. And we will hear more about this, of course, than in the recording of this particular paper. The second one is also quite interesting because you have heard that um, we have a processor that's always used in the past. And I don't mention the name, of course, I guess you all know what I mean. Interesting is that we have um, processors in the ARM area now, which could becoming more and more used, which become more broader also in Europe is one way of fostering European technologies and, and you know getting new systems. Um, this is a paper that talks a little bit about ARM-based systems, which makes it also very interesting. Um, also, basically being uh, in the area of deep learning again with convolutional networks. And also having FFT is, of course, a traditional high-performance computing um, method that is really interesting to see and combine. So also this paper uh, is very interesting. And also, of course, that's why it has been accepted. The third one that we will talk about is a little bit different. So first of all, the deep learning method is not any more convolutional approach that you use for image recognition or, or elements like that. Here we have deep learning in the area of LSTM, so long short term memory. Um, we have an interesting approach for really an application, which is quite interesting too. So it's really bottom up um, motivated by an application, which is always very nice. And one of the reasons why that one was getting accepted. And then of course, thinking about that um, data sharing is a very important part in our community right now in the data domain, ma far beyond machine learning. It goes into handling systems, data management, citations, up to really data analysis. So this is an important part as well and nicely all summarized together in this paper. 
So I think once again, before I talk too much, because we have recordings to every of these papers, I would ask the um, conference help us to perhaps start now with the first recording, which is uh, the paper around accelerating deep learning inference with cross-layer data reuse on GPUs. Once again, questions please in the chat or in Slack already during the presentation. We will pick up on this later. Hello, everyone. I'm here to give you a short report about my paper. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate with Professor Xiao Bingfeng at Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Today, I will show you our work about accelerating deep learning inference applications on GPUs with closed layer data reuse. Nowadays, convolution neural networks have become more and more popular with artificial intelligence and deep learning applications, including image classification and video recognition. The bottleneck of executing kernel varies depending on the applications and the GPU devices. Large-scale data transmission are bounded with memory bottleneck and complex computing Tasks are usually bounded with arithmetic bandwidth. The memory access bandwidth is the potential bottleneck for accelerating narrow networks. So we want to do performance optimization for convolution narrow network influence on GPUs with on-chip memory data reuse. Our key idea is how to reuse data on-chip. The inference Systems are usually parallel and have hierarchical memory and we get input image of chip with logic before computation and store to global memory after computation. Um, when reusing data on chip, we need to keep the necessary data between two layers on chip and use shared memory load store instructions instead. Here is the overview workflow of our fusion strategy step by step. Uh, we get the compute graph as input. In the first step, we will do fusion analysis to find three basic modes in the compute graph for fusion. In second step, tiling the convolution operators and parallel them on GPUs. Third, Step, we will do memory optimization to optimize the memory access pattern for higher performance. We conclude fusion modes into three different basic types, which is somehow similar to program or code optimization types. Um, mode A is straight layer one, straight one, followed by a uh, Layer two, which is which can reuse the data directly, mode B called split layer two, and the layer three reuse the result of layer one. The mode C is merge layer three reuse the result of both layer one and the layer two. Um, there are two reasons that we choose such three simple fusion modes for fusing the layers. The one. If GPU resources are limited, such as limited amount of registers and limited size of shared memory, too much fused layers may achieve worse performance. Another reason is CNs are complex and have different architectures. Applying these simple modes can achieve more optimization opportunities. These three basic modes can be widely found in most deep narrow networks. In Figure 5a, the inception module for fusion strategy is shown, which includes two modes A and one mode B. As shown in Figure 5 is the residual connection, which is widely used in famous narrow networks called ResNet, is divided into two fusion blocks, one mode A and one mode C. 
GPU memory hierarchy are complex and have multi levels. You, you should know the different memory usage before reusing the on chip data. Registers are fast and close to arithmetic hardware. Each thread can only access its own registers, but there are limited quantity, which depends on the number of threads launched each string multiprocessor. Shared memory is on chip memory and shared, shared among each block. It, it also has limited size, depends on the warps on each SM. Shared memory also has some problem um, leads to the throughput decreasing called band conflict, uh, which happen when accessing the same word as the same clock. Textual memory and global memory are off chip memory. Text Textual memory is read-only, uh, which is faster than global memory. The average latency of global memory is about 7,000 times higher than the register latency and five times higher than the shared memory latency. When we hope to reuse the data between two layers, we should keep the necessary data on the same chip or on the same SM. So how to parallel on GPUs? Uh, Tally is an important parallel strategy on GPU programming. Fusing multi-CN layers into a single kernel is a challenge because of the size of collusion filters are different and will influence the performance and the tiling strategy. Our tiling strategy is to tie each output image of feature maps into small tiles on the dimension of height and the width. Not channel the implicit and we implement implicit GMM convolution algorithm. Um, redundant data storage will also be kept on shared memory each block. As shown in Figure Six, the tiling size of three multiplied three will make six six will make six. 36 elements stored on the GPUs, where the input size is 25. Um, we, we also need to trade off while choosing tiling size. If we choose small size of tile, we will get too much redundant storage and uh, computation. However, large size is not always good because of limited size of shared memory and registers. If we use too much shared memory or registers, we will get bad performance. To this end, we design a simple tuning rule to find a relatively optimal tiling size. More details, please refer to our paper. Um, here is some more memory usage details. We insert synchronization primitives to ensure the correctness of the data before the second layer used in the shared memory. We use read-only catch when reading constant data with restrict type qualifiers because it is easier to use than textual memory and faster than LDG primitives. We also noticed, noticed that we should avoid shared memory conflict and uh, we need to have enough works for latency hiding. Now let me show you the uh, some experiment details. Uh, we implement our layer fusion method with four for representative narrow network architecture. Google Net, Mobile Net, SqueezeNet, and the ResNet. The performance of different applications is often strongly influenced by parallel strategies and the memory access patterns. We conducted the experiments on two different GPU devices, NVIDIA, Titan XP, and the Tesla P4. The first machine achieved a peak throughput of 12.15 teflops and the P4 get 5.5 teflops. Finally, we get two 0.02 times Kudian library on average performance and 1.5 times at least and more than 10 times at most. 
to clarify the effectiveness of the whole neural network with our method. We conduct the Fujin method on the SwissNet. We use Fujin strategy only on each block and generate the single layer with our tiling strategy. And we got 1.57 times Kudian library on the entry and experiment. Some simple analysis also conducted. The profiling analysis is conducted on the kernels to find out the relationship between our method and coding on memory and the computation. We get these profiling metrics on GPU memory from MVProof tools. We use executed load and the store instructions to get the overall memory instructions uh, we use. Global memory store transactions to get the global memory operations. We get more load and store instructions and less global memory transactions because our work reduce the memory global memory operations. Obviously, our work have redundant calculation, which is more than baseline library. Um, so with the redundant calculation and the memory operation, we still get speed up. To conclude our work, first, we summarize three basic and simple Fujin modes, straight, merge, and split. Then we propose a Fujin method and a parallel strategy that can reuse on cheap memory. Finally, the experiment shows that the data that reuse with on chip memory makes sense because we get 2.02 times and 1.57 times speed up on GPUs, which is faster than existing libraries. Thank you for listening. If you have any more questions, please contact me. All right. Thank you very much for the um, talk to the virtual recording. Um, we have one representative here also inside the call. So um, I hope I spell it right. Shui Ying Wang is here in the call to also ask questions, uh, answer questions if you have. So please feel free to put them in the chat if you like. That is one way of doing it. Or you use basically the channel that we have for our um, track number five. In the moment, I don't see uh, any questions yet. So I'm go ahead and ask uh, maybe a first small question. Um, you basically have now your own framework and of course many people use QDNN. Um, the question would be, do you see possibilities to think about merging those? So talk about with NVIDIA about these things and maybe integrate this into the libraries. Of course, QDNN is kind of a black box, I know, but um, do you think along these lines? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, can, can you hear me? Uh, uh, can loud you hear and clear. Me, uh, yes, yeah, loud uh, and clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, we, we also hope to merge our work into Kudian library. Um, I think it is uh, possible. Uh, I think it is possible, uh, but uh, uh now we didn't have this uh ha have any plan for this <laughs> uh we just uh we just do some um experiment on our ideas and we uh didn't cooperate with nvidia uh. <laughs> okay yeah i think they are very accessible at some of the conferences of course in face-to-face -face conferences like supercomputing uh, or basically maybe also all Europa, it's easier usually, but uh, I'm sure they might be interested into your methods. I have a quick chat um, check. Um, I think right now I don't see any questions in the chat right now. Let me check also the Slack channel here. So again, everyone don't be shy. Um, it's an interesting work about deep learning. So no further question from someone going once twice and i have a short other question before we 
basically come over to the next recording. So you basically have now used this fusion method uh, for inference and so on. Would you consider that this approach might be useful for some form of, of two things? I'm not sure how well you're aware of these um, approaches. One thing I could think is transfer learning at large, where some of these reuse strategies might be slightly modified, of course, be usable in transfer learning. And then the other way would be a neural architecture search. Um, this is a new approach, uh, more or less an instance aware neural architecture search to find more or less like AutoML already the architecture network um, or basically the topology uh, of your deep learning network in a semi automated fashion, let's put it this way, to help a bit with hyperparameter search and so forth, which is one of the key challenges. And I think one of these data reuse strategies you mentioned could be used in either or. Have you thought about these points or what is your future work in general? Uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't get the point why <laughs> exactly uh, um, for point uh, uh, for the second point uh, a narrow network architecture search uh, I have I have learned about this uh, before I do this work and uh, uh, in this work I my key idea is how to uh, fusion uh, the two different layers and I think uh, I can take this uh, go <laughs> do do the researches uh, about this uh, NAS uh, further and uh, uh, we will consider about it. Uh, and I didn't get to the uh, first point. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, no, I think uh, neural architecture search is for sure a very popular research topic right now. So you yes. find in Journal of Machine Learning, a very recent oh. articles and, and wherever you go. The first question was about transfer learning, which is different than neural architecture search, meaning you transfer, oh. let's say the, um, you have a pre-trained network essentially um, that oh. you reuse for another application domain. I think that would be a very short summary of it, uh, by far too short, but I could consider that some of the things in your transferred part maybe also could leverage the data reuse part, not all of that. And of course you're faced with new data sets from the new application domain. But I guess some of the things which haven't been touched could be using the data reuse strategy. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I will have, um, consider about your suggestion. <laughs> Uh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. No worries. No. It's uh, thank you again. Uh, also for being here. Uh, what time is you in, in right now? Because we don't have a face-to-face -face conference, making it quite difficult for some time zones. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, I can't. I didn't get your question. I'm yeah, sorry. no, I just was asking about what what's the time in your time uh, yeah, zone yeah. right now? Yes, yes, uh, about uh, um, uh, ten o'clock. Uh, we are at night. <laughs> okay, interesting. Not too yeah. late. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's an interesting, I think, consideration because people were saying we can put virtual conferences only, right, and not travel anymore. And I think the time zones yeah. clearly give you a point why that's not the case. Uh, left yes. alone all the nice social work with scientists together and dinners, mm -hmm. but also, of course, mm -hmm. corridor discussions. But let's go ahead. So um, thanks again for being here on the call, particularly in light of the fact of the, your time zone. And then um, I would like to ask now for the second recording. This paper is basically also about deep learning, but with a complete different view, also putting it into the context of FFT, uh, fast Fourier transform and the ARM CPUs, which is quite interesting to, to look and explore. So without further ado, I think we're listening to this. And again, questions, please put them in the chat or in the Slack channel. <laughs> 